This Learn Electrics video is about spurs on ring circuits. A short video about a simple approach to understanding this important aspect of our work as electricians. There are always lots of questions on the internet, in chat rooms and in comments boxes about spurs. How many sockets are permitted, for example? What is the difference between unfused and fused spurs? And why does it matter? If I can have a double socket, then why can't I have two single sockets? Does ZS change? And so on. And the reason for this video, why are some drawings in technical books so complicated? Look at this book example that was followed by a page of words to explain what was happening. No wonder the poor chap couldn't follow it. It's just too confusing, especially for new starters in the trade. So, in this video, we'll look at one step at a time, just one thing at once. Once understood, once learnt, it's there for life. This is our basic ring circuit. In this video, we'll assume that a 30 amp or 32 amp OCPD is used. OCPD is an abbreviation for overcurrent protective device. In other words, a circuit breaker or MCB, a fuse or an RCBO, but not an RCD. Cable sizes used in the video are relevant to the standard grey flat profile 2.5 by 1.5 PVC twin and earth and We've assumed, when needed, that there are no adverse conditions or temperature issues that would require larger size cables. To begin with, we'll assume just a basic ring circuit in a basic domestic dwelling under normal conditions. In order to help with understanding the drawings, we'll colour the different size cables as follows. 2.5 twin and earth will be coloured grey on the drawings, and orange will be used to show 1.5 twin and earth cable. Notice also the maximum current carrying capacity of each size cable under normal conditions. What accessories can be on a ring? A ring circuit can be any mix of double socket outlets, single socket outlets which can be switched or unswitched, of FCUs, also called fused connection units or fused spurs, and junction boxes. Certain appliances can be spurred off the ring central heating boiler controls for instance, or intruder alarms. When adding unfused spurs, we must follow the rules for safe functioning of the circuit. Each accessory point on the ring can have only one socket outlet moulding, junction box, etc. spurred off it as an unfused spur. Sockets can be one single or one double outlet. For a 30 amp or 32 amp OCPD, all wiring must be in 2.5 mm cable as shown here in grey. We can also spur at the consumer unit, but it must be through a fused spur at 13 amps. A single 2.5 mm cable from the socket direct to a 32 amp breaker is not allowed. As shown here by the orange wire after the FCU, the cable size can be reduced as it is protected by a 13 amp fuse in the FCU. Can we add a spur on a spur? If the spur off the ring is unfused, then the answer is no. We can have only one unfused spur per socket. And changing a double socket for two singles is not allowed in this situation either. Shown here, we now have a fused spur. Straight off the ring, we have a 13 amp FCU and we can put as many socket outlets as we need after the FCU. Look at the cable colours and sizes. From the ring to the FCU, it is 2.5 cable. After the FCU, it can, if we wish, be reduced to 1.5mm cable, shown orange here. Just to reiterate this important rule on cable size, regardless of the fused spur rating, conductor size before the FCU must be at least 2.5mm and conductor sizes after at least 1.5 millimetres. If we are installing a fused spur to supply socket outlets, then we use a 13 amp FCU or fused spur, and now it can have any number of socket outlets after the spur. Once again, the conductor size before the FCU must be at least 2.5 millimetre, and after the FCU, 
the conductor size must be at least 1.5 mm. If lighting must be run from the ring, use a 3 amp FCU. This will happen where, perhaps, a new conservatory has been added and it is all but impossible to extend the existing lighting into the conservatory. Again, 2.5 mm twin and earth before the FCU and 1.5 mm after. So, spurs on unfused spurs are just not permitted. And cables from the ring must be the same size as the ring conductors, in this case 2.5 mm. Using smaller 1.5 mm cable to come off the ring is not permitted in most cases. However, if there is a fused spur, in other words an FCU, sitting on the ring, then we can come off the ring straight away with 1.5 mm cable. Let's have a quick overview of what we've done so far in this video. In our example, a 30 or 32 amp ring circuit should be wired in 2.5 by 1.5 twin and earth. From each accessory that is actually on the ring, we can take an unfused spur to one spurred accessory and one only. The cable size from the ring to the spurred accessory must be the same size as the cables forming the ring, in other words, 2.5 millimeters. If we use a fused connection unit, a fused spur at 13 amps, then we can have as many accessories as we need after the FCU. The cable from the ring to the FCU must be 2.5 millimeters, and after the FCU, we can, if we wish, reduce the cable size to 1.5 millimeters. The next question is about ZS. Does this change if we add spurs to a circuit? Let's take a look. At point A on this drawing, the socket outlet on the ring and the socket outlet spurred off the ring are both protected by the 32 amp breaker at the consumer unit. If this was the type B breaker or RCBO, we would have a maximum ZS of 1.1 ohms for both of these outlets at point A. However, at point B, we have two sockets that are protected by an FCU with a 13 amp BS1362 fuse installed. The furthest socket on this spur will therefore have a maximum permissible measured ZS of 1.84 ohms. The 1.84 ohms for ZS only applies to the sockets on the fuse spur at point B. Regulation 411.4.201 on page 66 of the Brown Amendment 2 Regs book gives us the information that we need. The ZS for final circuits protected by fuses requiring a 0.4 second disconnection time will be found in table 41.2 and we will find this table on page 67. Here is table 41.2 and shown in the red box is the maximum tabulated ZS value for a 13 amp BS1362 fuse. This is 2.3 ohms and will need to be converted to a maximum permitted measured value to compare with our on-site readings with a test meter. And for the BSEN60898 circuit breaker, table 41.3 on page 68 will give us the tabulated value for a 32 amp type B device. This is 1.37 ohms and again it needs adjusting for the maximum measured on-site values. Tabulated values, those taken from the tables in the regs book, should be multiplied by 0.8 to arrive at the 80% maximum permitted measured ZS value. For the 13 amp BS1362 fuse, 2.3 multiplied by 0.8 is 1.84 ohms. And this tells us that our measured reading with our test meter should not exceed this 1.84 ohms in value. For a Type B 32 amp BSEN60898 circuit breaker or RCBO, 1.37 ohms multiplied by 0.8 is 1.1 ohms. Part of the circuit protected by this device should not exceed a measured value of 1.1 ohms. Thank you for watching. It really is appreciated. And we hope that you found this video useful and that has helped your understanding of what we can and can't do with spurs on a ring circuit. Look out for a future video about spurs on radial circuits. Something totally different again.
please subscribe to our channel to get access to all of our videos and remember to click on notify to be sure of not missing our next video. And you will find even more information, videos and help on our website at learnelectrics.com. And don't forget that you can also type in Learn Electrics, all one word, into the YouTube search bar to go directly to our channel at any time from any computer. We are constantly adding new videos to our channel, so don't miss the next one. Thank you for watching, and we hope to see you again very soon.